Hi y'all, it's Latrice. So listen, really quick, I had to just come and share some things this morning. The last couple of days, I know y'all missed my car ministry, um, but some things have been heavy on my heart and I just want to just share a couple of things. I pray you're having a great week. It's Friday. Um, but I was thinking about one of my favorite scriptures. I have a lot of favorite scriptures, but one of them um, early on, um, I remember after Olivia, and I'm just jumping right in, as you can tell, um, when the Lord was just really dealing with me. And again, I felt like, okay, it's been a setup. Something has happened. And I know last week I was telling you about um, how the Lord was showing me what it means to be chosen, to be chosen for God. Um, and we know the scripture in Matthew, many are called, but few are chosen. And I believe that to be chosen is such a privilege. And I kind of talked about some of the things the Lord was showing me last weekend and being chosen. Um, it's a, it can be a lonely place. It's a privileged place. It's an honor to be marked for Christ. But it's a, a place where sometimes you're going to go through some things because you're chosen. And God knows. He knows what he's put in you. And even in your trials, you're chosen. You know, to walk that thing out for the glory of God. And so anyway, I would encourage you to look at those videos. But when I was thinking about being chosen, I also thought about this morning, my, one of my favorite scriptures, getting back to that Ephesians 4. And one to depending on which um, translation you read it in but it talks about leading a life that's worthy of the call or um, I think in the amplified version it says lead a life worthy of your calling but when you look at it in the amplified it says moral character integrity um it lists what it means to lead a life and i i don't know today i just want to encourage you to do just that i don't think that's a scripture that i will ever stop quoting because i think when you think about the fact that we all have something to do and God has called us to do something. It's so important that we literally remember the cross. I, I just want to encourage you this morning to live in light of the cross. When you realize what God did for you, how he gave his life, how he sacrificed his life, how do we live these raggedy lives as believers? Now, I'm not even talking to, you know, those who have not given his, their lives to Christ, but I'm talking about the believers, those who have given their life to Christ. How do you lead these He's like he paid a price y'all he died on Calvary you know he got up with all power like when you realize who you were you know but if it had just been you he would have went to the cross how do you be a liar and and proclaim to be a believer how are you deceitful how are you full of anger how are you um in the church mean as a rattlesnake how are you a master manipulator how are you a fornicator and adulterer but you but you proclaim in christ and i don't really care if i offend anyone because here's the thing i'm offended in that he paid a price for you. And so if you are professing the name of Christ and being called and being chosen, it requires you to live right. It requires you to stand up and be an example. We are to be the salt of the earth and the church is almost becoming this, this, I don't know what you want to call it, like a blurred line. There's no, everywhere Christ went, he made a, there was a clean line between good and evil. He made a division. He He led by love, but God made it very clear what the word of God, who he was, you know, and and we have to do the same. No one, if you are like an undercover Christian, huh? Like, you know, you a Christian, but nobody else don't know. No, that's not leading a life, but you ought to stand tall and and there should be some things that people know. Oh, don't appreciate, don't, don't approach Latrice on that because that's not what she about. What an honor. I'm not going to be like, oh no, I, I'll do it with, with, with y'all not. There are some things that I should be set apart from. There are some things that people should not be able to invite me or encourage me to come because of my stand. What an honor to take a stand for Christ and be different, to be set apart. And I just want to encourage you this morning that it's time for the believers, the believers, believers to make to draw that line you know to really live if you're going to serve them serve them if you're not then 
didn't serve your other master or your master or whoever you know but y'all he paid to he paid to have a price and i guess the last night and this morning i was just worshiping him and i just y'all I love Jesus. I make no apologies for it, but he's real. He changes lives. He is he is a God who is all he he know he's all knowing, he's all powerful. There's nothing too hard for God. And what an honor to even be persecuted for him. What an honor to go through trials because here's the thing, those trials are working something in me. They're they're birthing me. They're they're birthing things in me. They're they're um they're paving and they're making some muscles, some spiritual muscles that's going to allow me to go forth in the purpose that he called. And so we don't know what what we're going through and how going through it matters. We don't know how just taking a stand on your job when you know something is wrong. And yes, it could mean your job, but will you operate in integrity? And that one person is watching, but that one person could change your future because you stood up for God. And they know all along that everybody been lying. They know all along that something is going on, but they watching you because you the one that's supposed to know the Lord and in where you seem so alone God is say because you stood up for me not only am I gonna stand up for you but I'm gonna open doors yeah you lost your job but next week I got something set up and I'm just saying that we got to take a stand y'all you can't be a coward and serve Christ that's not it don't go together yes it's a lonely place yes it's gonna be an uncomfortable place but I would rather be uncomfortable I would rather be persecuted for Christ any day than to stand up and mingle with the world. And so I just wanted to encourage you with that today. And I wrote, I, I thought about this scripture. This whole um, passage is really great. I would enc encourage you to read it. First Peter um, 4, and it talks about living for God in the New Living Translation. But I want to just um, hit some different things. But especially I thought it was really, really good. Let me get down to the part that I want to read. Um, so a couple of verses, okay. In verse, um, 12, it says, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of um, of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. And I, I thought that was so important because remember that it's about living holy, y'all. It's about, I, I think we forgot that word. That's like a word that, um, you know, the church don't want to, live up to holiness um i also wanted to read i thought this was really good too um for if you have suffered physically for for christ i'm sorry it is first peter 4 2 you won't verse 2 you won't spend the rest of your life chasing your own desires but you will be anxious to do the will of god and that's and so in that context you can read up a little bit but i just wanted to specifically read that part but it's reminding us that it's not a lot we have to turn away from sin it's not about us but when you profess the name of god there's a way that you should be living and I want to read it in the amplified version starting with first Peter 4 therefore since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us arm yourself like warriors with the same purpose being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing God because whoever has suffered in the flesh being like-minded with Christ is done with intentional sin having stopped pleasing the world so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for living for human appetites and desires but lies that for the will and purpose of God. And so y'all that's what it's all about. It's about living for the for the Lord. When you decide to give your life to Christ and you're chosen 
and you have proclaimed Christ and you're professing Christ, there's a life that you live. And that does mean being persecuted. That does mean going against the grain. It does mean being different. It does mean not being liked by everybody. It does mean being lonely. It does mean standing in a hard place. But there's not a day that you can stand for God that he won't stand for you. And so I don't know. That was just so on me this morning because I guess I'm really, really tired of not just the world i'm not even dealing with the world but the church like we're confusing we have a double standard we just go in and do church and then and i think about that's why the scripture says if you think about it it says that you're going to come before him and say oh but i preached in your name and i sung in your name and i cast out demons in your name and i mean it was the whole list but it said he gonna say depart from me i never knew you what a what a shame so and he ain't talking about the word he talking about believers you know what i'm saying y'all we got to have right motives we have to do things with a right heart and i just want to encourage you today because he is such a great god he is such um i literally i type these notes i, I want to just share listen if i can let me get my glasses because y'all know god is gonna heal my eyes he already has but the total manifestation hasn't come um but I want to share something with you really quick. I wrote this yesterday and it just blew my mind. And I'm, I'm sharing this because I want you to understand the type of God we serve. It says, I wrote these things down. Um, in my understanding, this is my notes. In my understanding alone, I will never understand God's plan for my life. Which is why he says, in all thy ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. You don't even have the mind to be on the same level as him, to understand. And so we have to stay connected to him in the spirit. But then I wrote down omnipresent. Meaning he's all present. God is capable of being everywhere at the same time. He is aware of the past, present, and future. Omnipotent, all-powerful, supreme power. God can do what he wants, not subject to physical limitations. God has power over everything. Omniscient, God's power is infinite, limitless, all-knowing. Nothing takes him by surprise. So I put that because... My next thing is those who I wrote in my notes, those who know their God will do exploits. God is able to do greater things through me. These are just some of my notes that I was thinking about when I was meditating on a word yesterday. And I'm sharing that because I believe that ties into leading a life. When you realize who this God is, how he is so awesome, he is powerful, he is limitless, he's infinite, he's what can man do to me? You know, to go through trials, I already know I'm victorious. It doesn't matter what the what the trial is. It doesn't matter what the bank account says. It doesn't matter what's before me. But if I stand and, and stand in faith in the word of God and be empowered by his word, y'all, I have a promise that I'm coming out victorious. But yes, you have to walk it out. Yes, you have to stand in some hard times. And when you realize the type of God, a God who is capable of being everywhere at the same time, who's all power. He's there's no physical limitations. Y'all, this is the type of God I serve. And so how dare I insult him by not walking by faith, by not trusting him, by being a, a um a total barrier to sinners because I'm living a double standard life. How dare you? How dare you insult the God of our salvation? He paid too high of a price. So make a decision. Live for him or don't live for him. But choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. If you're going to serve him, then give him your all. Be the salt of the earth. Stand. Seek his face and say, God, how do I represent you? How do I be an image bearer of your love, of your faithfulness, of your of of your holiness how do i show me daily y'all it's daily this is what i'm talking about praying it's daily going before him and saying lord search my heart if there's anything in you that would cause shame get it out of me that's 
that's what's important, y'all. I think about David. He said, David is a man of my heart. David was a murderer. He was an adulterer. He, I, David did so many things, but David, he got it straight. He wasn't one to say, oh, I know I can take the grace of God for granted. He made mistakes, but David, when you read Psalms and when you get in a book, David cried out before God, and he also had to pay some, some prices. 